that it's being recorded for NCTV and North Street Neighborhood Association. So. Uh, um, I'm calling the meeting to order, and I have an announcement of audio video recording of this meeting, and also new at this um, committee meeting on social services and veterans affairs. We are being recorded by NCTV. Um, approval of the minutes of July 15th, 2013. So moved. Move Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Steve Connors is supposed to be here at 510. Brad LeBay called me early this morning to inform me that he had surgery done on his eyes and that he was running into a problem and had to go with the doctors. So he said Steve is probably going to come in and talk about um, the updated plan events for the rest of 2013. I got a hold of Ann White because she was scheduled at 6.10 p.m. and I asked her to come in at quarter of, so she will be here early. Okay. Sounds good. And I would like to talk about the agenda for the month of October, so I'd like to take number nine out of order. Okay. So moved. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. I had it. Is it here? I don't think so. Just a minute. Here it is. Sorry. Um, Pat Keller and I have been working very closely together, and she knows this Carl Signoli. Signoli, yeah. Okay. And he is, they're going to be new to our committee coming in in um, October 21st. And he does reintegration. He's the manager at the Hampshire County House of Correction. So this is new to our committee. And also, we have another committee coming in. Um, Nancy Gonzalez Silva, who's director of Grace House. So these are two brand new ones. Okay. Okay. She's brilliant. Nancy. Nancy Gonzalez, I know her well. I met her once. Yep. So I would like to take out of order number 10. Would there be any topics that anybody would like to talk about? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I got a, just a quick question. Are we, we're rehabbing this committee, is that correct? I think it's, he's, well, there's a few things that happen. First of all, when um, the next council session begins, yeah. at that point, there's an aspect of the charter that kicks in about committee assign, uh, um, not committee, the establishing committees basically either have to be by executive order or by the council. So we yeah. have to reestablish the committees has been, I think, Councilors uh, Adams and uh, Freeman Daniels have been reviewing, making recommendations to, I believe, the Ordinance Committee about redesign of committees. And I, this is one of them, I think all of them, have been restudied to figure out what's the best way to approach and what's the what's the best use of our time. So I don't know where, I don't know where it's at I now. I talked so they, with what? Councilor Adams in regards of seeing where he wants to combine and I, I don't think it's gone up ordinance yet. Okay. And he wants to put in on social services and veterans affairs the arts council, I think, and recreation. And I said, Jesse, I said, we're busy with all the agencies coming in and veterans agency. And I said, how come you're not doing that like you have been separately, the two of them together? And he said, well, we're not that busy. I said, well, I can attempt to try to fit them in, but I'm not going to do away with so many agencies in the city in the Veterans Agency. It's pretty busy. We're busy. The 90 minutes is always, always consumed. Exactly. So I don't um, want to hurt you... the Veterans Services yeah. either. And I don't want to have three-hour meetings well, either. I mean, part of the discussion about meetings is, of course, usually subcommittees course, are established to review um, legislation, stuff that we passed or reviewed. So. Mm -hmm. And we actually we don't have anything referred to this committee. 
Right. Because there's nothing that necessarily. This is this was as you know uh, this evolved from the committee that reviewed the um, CDBG funds. Yeah. And and then combining where we're and we're also mandated by the state and I think even by the federal government to have a Veterans Affairs committee. Mm -hmm. So the uh, I think you know I wasn't here when that actually happened, but the the theory being that these are all social service programming, let's create one committee. Mm -hmm. And so the the discussion I think is focusing on um, is there a way that makes sense that there would be things that were referred to this committee that we discussed that are relevant that we can make recommendations to the council at large? I mean, point mm -hmm. of fact. Any of the issues that come up on the council floor, there's nothing that comes out of any discussion that we have here. For the, yeah. It just gives it gives us a broader knowledge and understanding of the, the social service program that's in the community and also the veterans affairs, and then we invite them to come speak to the council when we want them to expand our knowledge. So, is there a more efficient way of doing that? And I think that's that's what the councilors are looking at. Because to your point, uh, Councilor Dacey, that you know three hours. Um, might be more effectively spent on something that yeah <clears throat> well we often give spiels at the council of things that we have gone right through so here exactly like Marianne, human, for years the human rights commission yeah. and yeah and um, I don't know I just I, 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 I that's why I brought it up yeah. mm -hmm. that's why I, knew, I saw we had a little bit of time here because I was concerned um, about this yeah I've been thinking about it um, since it came around and I wasn't really sure just exactly where it was or how it's been progressing. I think, I think all it's been is just been knocked around trying to figure out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the things I wanted to do as council president was to create, we have more committees than most communities, actually. Yeah. We have more subcommittees. We, as councilors, serve and work more time in meetings than most other councilors, yeah. including councilors who get salaries yeah. and stuff. And yeah. so... Um, and so the idea was to create ones that made sense in the context of this time, these times, ones that actually had, that were effective use of our time. Mm -hmm. I, and that's not to say this isn't. I actually think, you know, it's, it's, um, it's particularly edifying for those of us on this committee, but then that's a lot of other counselors who are not up to speed on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. there may be a better way of doing that so everyone's more aware of the agencies and the programs that are serving North Hampton. I mean, because the other irony is, of course, and we've discussed this in when we're campaigning, people keep saying all this money that we put in social service programming, we did put next to nothing. I mean, right. uh, as far as the reflection of the city budget, we're not discussing something that has a particularly profound impact mm -hmm. on the city budget, uh, you know, because municipalities are not allowed to. Uh, um, to, to expend on, on social service programs. It's usually just management of state and federal funds to some extent that we have some say, but, and that's in block grant funds. Yeah. I was pretty happy with the CDBG. Uh, I know we got a cut yeah. this year of uh, about 10%, but then we got, it, then we got, we got money back, yeah. and they bumped it up. Yeah. How much did we get? 100 grand. Yes. We got $100,000 of over and above the $62,000 that they cut. Right. No, that was, that was good. Yeah, so that, that, that I, went well. I just feel that the veteran services, it's, it's expanding, they're doing right. more. Well, we're obliged by law right, to exactly. have a, a committee, but but also the law, I don't think, stipulates how often we have to meet no, on that. No, I think it's, it could be once yeah. a year yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It, at one point, <coughs> veterans, when it really was reduced next to nothing, at one point it was only yes. once a year, and that I don't think was good either. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's just meeting the the spirit of the law, but not meeting the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Right, and I think we're bringing them in like, well, last year a lot because of the fundraising they were doing. They're predicting two and a half years uh, from now, we will have an additional one million veterans. Yeah, combat will come, veterans too. Combat yeah. veterans that will be coming into into the nation, and how many will be here? Um, it's going to be it's going to be huge. It, it, there's this is going to be a fiscal uh, nut to crack. Well, and to that point, that is something that we do have some say in. And, and, and as Steve Connor moves towards regionalization, of course, we um, we need to keep a pace of what what the finances what the the finances are relative to the city yep. of Northampton. What that means, uh, the fact that he's been so very effective, it's also translated into larger allocations, but. 
having the state finally come through, having the feds come through, um, whereas before we were just kind of running on a minimal budget, providing a minimal amount of uh, uh, services for a minimal amount of uh, service people. Yeah. And that's no longer the case. And that's why I think a robust veterans committee is yeah, helpful. We're, we're going to have a lot of sense. people. I, I look at, I talked to Jim McGovern about 100% um, uh, funding, you know, reimbursement for everything, which now we get 75 for something. We get hundreds in other, 100 in another, another area. Um, and it is my opinion that these should be funded fully, not by the state, but by the federal government. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I, and they all know it, too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that either, I think. But, um, and municipalities and things such as that, I don't mind a municipality as being uh, the front person. The distributor. Uh, the distributor, but that money needs to come from the federal government. I mean, we don't send these people to war. No. We don't. And in fact, actually, Northampton would, North would, would never do that. They send these people to war. No. And at the same time, they are people who have served our country, who live in this community, or not realizing the full breadth of, of, of um, benefits that they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think Northampton, well, th thanks to Steve Connor, we beat out every other community in the state yep. as Correct. far as providing yep. services. And, and and so that to that extent, I think Steve's been bolstered and the veterans uh, groups have been bolstered by the fact that we have this committee and that we do have this contact. So I think, I, you know, so all that comes up in the, but you know, I mean, having, for instance, Hampshire County Jail come in, it's good. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a pretty significant portion of property in in, this, yep. in the state, but in the city, but we have absolutely no say, yep. none yep. what goes on in the jail exactly. uh, at, but, at all. We don't have. Like Peg said, he they do help out, like some of our veterans. They do. They and actually through our district attorney Dave Sullivan. They have. Steve is there. I was at a meeting at the district attorney's committee meeting and talking about veterans who needed legal representation, and they are up there. And it's amazing what no, they're doing and no, to that, help and them. And that makes a lot of sense. And, and those that, that have been addicted and, and things like that, when they enter, the, they come back into the community, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and they don't have anybody, no family. There's nobody out there for them. Exactly. I mean, they, it's like j jumping out into the black hole. Mm -hmm. We can get Bob Garvey. And there the you go. Come in. You have the sheriff He'll come, come in. in. Yeah, he will. of course he will. I'll call him. I say, Bob. Yeah, it's, 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 have, have the sheriff come in, talk about programs that he has for uh, reintroduction or reimmersion into the community. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's he a is. good guy. He really is. So um, but uh, and if President like Obama is listening to this uh, this tape that um, we're, I know we're being recorded right now, hands off this area. Stay out. <laughs> Just want to let you know that. I'm sure he's, I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to check in. Because <clears throat> that could be another... <laughs> Absolute disaster. Um, Steve was supposed to be here at six ten. At five ten, I hope. Five ten. At five ten. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we Don't can still worry. carry this further. That would be depressing. Um, Do you so. think we should give him a call? <clears throat> I got a cell phone number somewhere. I'll, I'll text him. But I really am concerned about combining the arts and recreation to this committee. I don't, we'd have to do it once a year with them because I, we can't fit them in like we're doing with the agencies. And I find we have a good connection with new agencies coming in. They're working with City Hall, with the mayor, and you've met new people coming in on agencies yep. and I think it's great that we're coming in together and seeing how the agencies benefit the city and what they're doing. That's where my value is. Hey, who knows? There's three of us here that have challenges. We don't even know if we'll be here. That's a good point. Hey, if you're not, you're That's not. Then what we do is we we'll come hey, in. We will take a load off our shoulders. <laughs> you just come in and go to committee meetings and you form a group. So I don't have to. I do.
Bring it anyway. Taco was <laughs> <laughs> walking in the door. Hey, were your ears burning? You were just <laughs> dialing it. Is your phone buzzing? Five thirty. Is your phone buzzing? No, five ten. Five ten. But that's okay. We did a lot. It's okay. We have plenty to Not do. Not a problem. Wow. We're cool. Why did I think five thirty? It's okay. I was going to be early. You get points for being early in your own mind. Oh, God. Are you watching your own movies? I went to a move, the executive board of COSA. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Monty, is that a bad Yeah, Monty, Monty, did, yeah. But I went to the board meeting and I was so proud of myself. I dropped off Karen and I said, wow, I'm two minutes early. I walk in there and they're all talking. And I'm thinking, yeah. About 10 minutes later, they go, well, all right, so we talked about this before you got here. And I'm like, well, why? They said the meeting started at 8.30. I got there at two minutes before 9. Oh. Well, at least you got there, Steve. Just so so good that's what, twice in a day? No, that was, that was last week. Oh, well, teacher. Yeah, awesome. At least once or twice a week I got yeah, there. I mean, even with home <laughs> occupation, you get five trips a day. So. Okay. Brad LeBay called me early this morning to tell me about his surgery that he had and that you were going to go ahead and present and do an update. Right. If you want them first. Then. Why don't we get them out of the way? Sure. Okay. So, um, we met, I met with them at their meeting last week. They are still pulling things together. Everything that went on in the spring went pretty well, including the Elks um, Flag Day event. That went well. Mm -hmm. Still not getting the crowds that they were hoping for, but, you know, they're going to do it every year or so. And coming up, we're working mostly, the council's working mostly on the Veterans Day breakfast and Veterans Day parade. Um, but there is some involvement because one of the members of the Veterans Council is the Polish Heritage mm -hmm. Group, and they have their big parade on, in Northampton, it's not Columbus Day, it's Pulaski Day. Right. Um, but so, in that, that parade, um, I'd like to report, is going to be almost twice as big as it was last year. It was, it was big last yeah. year. That's good. So they're thinking it's going to be twice as big. So they're... What's the route? Is it the same route? No, because they're, they're lining up... Um, they said the old Belize. The what? The old Belize Chevrolet? Yeah. What, You're Williamsburg? kidding. Well, no, no. <laughs> no. But that's down the other end of King Street, isn't yeah. that North King? Yeah, North King. Well, they can't be marching on Went from Belize to Dana. Yeah. Oh, right. That's too far. Yeah, they can't be, but that's what, what that's what I had heard. Well, the problem was that they'd been lining up, um, the, by the church. Right. Yeah. And that, but they're too big, they can't set up there. Yeah, and it's a short parade. Right, well, now it's going to be a longer parade because the parade is even longer. So they're starting somewhere. I bet you they're talking about Honda. Oh, it must be. Still, that's a, that's I bet you were right. Street and, okay. Yeah. So, hey, think about yeah. Memorial Day parade. That goes around a couple of times. Yeah, that that's a good doesn't block the major state artery. It's so funny. Well, and we have to have artery blockage. You know, yes, we know. do. That's why I eat lots of fatty foods. <laughs> so you're going to let us know, Steve? Yeah, I'll let you know where it exactly lines up. Everybody will get it in their emails. All city council will get it. Thank you. Um, so that's going on. And then there's, you know, the Pearl Harbor, which right. is December yeah. 7th. Those are two things that the council's involved with, but not on its own. Veterans Day and Veterans Day breakfast, they are. Um, we are in search of, you know, who the speakers are going to be, this, that, and the other thing, but, um, you know, they're moving ahead. It, the activities committee works really hard, so. On the um, um, breakfast, mm -hmm. will that, do you know if it's going to be at Smith location or what? 
think. No, it's now at the Alps. They moved it to the Alps. Yes. Yes. That's, is that where we went last year? No, nope, we went to, uh, last year we went to Smith School. That's where yeah, it was yeah. at Smith Walk, but <clears throat> I think this year I got it in my camera. And I don't, I don't understand why they moved it. I thought uh, it, was, it worked out perfect. It was. I don't, I don't moved. really know why they moved it either. But it's um, none of my business. If they moved it, they moved it. I mean, I started it down at the senior center when I started it. But yeah, it's at the Elks Lodge. Hmm. I would imagine... Do you have a um, time on that? Oh, yeah, I think it's <clears> 30. Um, I would guess that the reason why is, is that 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Yeah. And that do you the, know when the tickets will be ready? Oh, they'll usually have those about three weeks before that. When you write that down, you, military time. Veterans. Well, yeah, there you go. Fifty zero hours. hours. Do you know what the price is on that? No, I do not. So, a good but I think they've moved it there because they get the hall for free. I don't yeah. think Smith Polk was. I don't know why they changed it. Smith didn't charge him either. No, yeah. they didn't. I don't know. I don't know why. And they did an excellent job there. Smith even provided the food. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, that's up to them. That's, I uh, will, that's their job. I will <coughs> like to know that myself. But So that's all they had really to report at this point. They don't really, everything's up in the air. I would say in October they're going to give you all the details of Veterans Day. Well, I, I crack up because... I started the breakfast way back when, I remember. so that the speakers weren't out in the cold, mm -hmm. and the speakers could actually speak what they wanted to say at the breakfast in the warmth. We now have the breakfast, not a, they now have a speaker at the breakfast and, and at the parade, so they still have somebody out there in the cold and all yeah. like this. Hey, yeah, except this, you know, as with the Pulaski Day Parade, moving it on the, on the leeward side of... Uh, that was yeah. Getting a little sun. Help. That was yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Instead of being in the wind tunnel and in the shade, it's, it just makes it, a huge difference. It doesn't sitting on those yeah. metal chairs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Metal chairs. For years, and the discussion always was, why are we not on the other side of this building in the sun? Yeah. It went on for years and years. And all of a sudden, one day, like a light went on, and all of a sudden, we were over there. Yeah, it was, it was basically... Change, remember, doesn't, change doesn't happen easily in the veteran. Do you remember when Michael Ryan gave his or he gave his speech at the he was standing there, he had the wool jacket on, yep. the yep. scarf, the gloves, it was zero. Yep. And he went on and, about, and he went on and on. And on, and on, and on. Okay, we're done now, Mike. Mike, come on now. We're done. All right. So, um, so that's about all the report on the council at this speaking, point. Speaking of flag retirements, I was just knowing that the, the flag out front. I, of here is, uh, is should have been retired at least a year ago. It's at half mass today, and I'd, I'd assume that's because of the shootings in DC. No, uh, no uh, and because it wasn't brought up over the weekend. I think it was supposed to be. Okay. Uh, and there's not a light out there. No, no. no. Uh, well, it does stay lit. There is a there that does get lit, but the problem is that it should have gone up. Yeah, uh, somehow. I didn't realize that it hadn't gone up. Um, that's that's the problem when the governor keeps asking for it to happen on Fridays right. and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. right. Is I'll run here on a Saturday morning, I'll lower the flags, but then, you know, it's the weekend. I get on with my, you know, my family. That's not my thing. Okay. So um, our flag is up. I'll do that on my way out of here. We'll raise it back up, but it needs it. We need a new one. Yeah, that one's definitely. So nice. maybe I'll just take it down since it's already halfway down. And then we can replace it when we get a shipment in, there you which go. is in two days. Oh, perfect. Where do you order your flags, Dick? Whoever gives us the best price. It depends on which flags. You know, there's the indoor flags. Mm -hmm. uh, there's outside flags. The ones that are the outside three flags. by fives or four by sixes, usually we get them from Jerry's Gob Shop, which is out in southeast Massachusetts. Um, and they're weatherproofing like that. Yeah. Um, we have our cemetery flags, which we usually don't go to Jerry for those because we have another company that sells it cheaper per yeah. flag. Isn't he right, right outside of Gloucester? There's a place outside of Gloucester. Yeah. Yeah. There's about a hundred of them. Yeah. They're, on the eastern seaboard. I yeah, there's Chicopee. a lot of them. Yeah. I go to Chickabee to get ours for our yeah. flag. Mm. Right. Okay. Century. Yes. Right. And Century 
is great because they're right nearby for emergencies, but they're usually more expensive than oh, yeah. where I can get them anywhere else. Um, except that their state flag is just as cheap as anywhere else I can get the state flag. So they work out well. Um, we don't sell flags to the public, do we? No. We asked you. Okay. No, no, no. Um, somebody asked me to find out, I will tell them where they can go and get them. But we don't place orders for the public, we just us. And I guess some of the flags up in Florence need to get replaced. And I didn't realize Danny Breen, who always has done the flags Memorial Day in the springtime, and he takes them down and he puts them back up for the fourth. And he's retired. Uh -oh. At least that's what I assume. Um, so I've got to get in touch with Rich Parcelides and say, Rich, I need, will you take those down? Bring down a bunch of them that are no good anymore and get them to me. Because the, the American Legion does, they did, the Elks has their official flag burning ceremony, mm -hmm. but the Legion has a real flag burning where we take all of our retired flags. Okay. So they did a whole bunch of them last May. And, we're going to have a whole bunch. Maybe they can do another one this fall. We have a brand new flagpole going up in uh, the Trinity Row Park. It's a 40 okay. foot brand new aluminum, okay. spun aluminum. Good. Is that thing gorgeous? So Good. That flagpole is there now. I took down at Franklin King's house in 1981 on Country Way. Yeah. And stood that up there. But the maple tree was smaller then. Right. Now the maple tree has grown around the damn flagpole. Right. And the cleat is busted, so it's right. tough to tie. Yeah, right. it's been. So anyway, and by the way, that park is moving forward. The water service is in for the fountain now. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's that committee. Right, thank you. Come on, fingers. Okay. These are the line items in my budget that matter as far as 115 and state reimbursement. Um, the other stuff is still pretty minuscule, you know, office supplies, things like that. And a lot of it I'm buying off of the grant that we got. But just to give you an update, of, we're finishing up the first quarter of the year, and these are our expenses. So um, this is all stuff that's getting sent back from the state at either 75% or 100%. So we've got the medical insurance. You know, uh, we're a quarter of the way through with a quarter of the way of the budget. So most of this is on where we should be. Um, the veterans benefits is a little bit lower than we usually see in a quarter, which is kind of weird. Um, it seems like we've gotten so many people, mm -hmm. but maybe my other towns are just getting me interfering. Burials, so far we've only had one burial, which is very unusual. I do know there's another one. Um, there is a, otherwise known as an institution here in Northampton. Um, he went by Rock, but everybody else knows him as James Freund. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was found um, several weeks ago. Um, a little too much of the exposure and whatever. So uh, we were waiting for a clearance um, to release the body. There is no next of kin that we can find. Um, the ex-wife, we called. She was in Connecticut. Everybody's tried to reach out to her. She hasn't returned any calls. He did have his wish. There's a woman who um, is in town, and he had a notarized wish to be buried next to his son, who died. Spell we can last name not it find him. Frank? Freund. Freund. Yeah. We have tried everything. The police have investigated. We've tried everything to try to find where the son was buried. We can't find that. Um, we are going to ask. We're going to be taking charge of it at our office. Um, and we will get the uh, remains released to us. He will be cremated and interred into the Veterans Cemetery. Mm -hmm. If at some time they find that uh, we find out where the son was buried and we can make the transfer, we will. But at this point, he's at the medical examiner's office and hasn't been released, and we have to get that done. And we're going to pay for the funeral. That's 
somehow <coughs> like send a registered letter to the wife or something, like in the courts or something? Yeah, the, there's been mail sent, everything. It doesn't sound like she, I'm sure she had a rough marriage with him. And, mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, but it's amazing how many people stepped up after he died to try to do yeah. this. Um, in both the police department, the sheriff's department. Um, but yeah, so the other corpse, in his own way, he'll be missed. Yeah. <laughs> the other corpse that was found in Florence River there, uh, Leo Lumbus. Is she a veteran? I don't think so. I didn't get anybody asking me to check it out. I did not check it out, but it yeah. doesn't ring that bell in any of our system. Okay. So I guess we could always check it. I just, I'm just curious. I just didn't know. I know you hung out quite a bit with them, Steve yeah. uh, O'Connor. Right. Okay. And then um, medical expenses, which is the co-pays, and percentage-wise, we're we're still below. So we look like we're doing well, um, but you never know what the hell the winter will bring. On the bad weather. State of two thousand dollars. Yep. That covers the cremation, or if, say, a veteran who does pass away, say that they don't want to be cremated, isn't the expense more expensive? This is how the whole thing pretty much works. According to the state regulations, if we have an indigent veteran and the family doesn't have, there was no life insurance or anything, and they want to, they, they can't afford to have things done, they can have up to a $3,000 expenditure okay. for the funeral and burial. Mm -hmm. We will reimburse 2000 of it. Okay. There are some where we cannot find any next of kin or whatever. Luckily, we have a Herms and Sluzniaks. Um, I haven't asked it of um, um, peas or peas, yeah, yeah, up and uh, across from the hospital. But they have put in for those barrels, and they'll do it under three thousand. Saluzniax and the Hearns will do really no frills and do it under the two thousand for nineteen hundred, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and we will um, just pay them, and they take care of things. So we're lucky in that way that we have it. it statewide, it was a real issue, and I dealt with it my year of presidency um, because there were funeral homes were, were figuring out how to like take advantage of the system rather than just indigent. We even had one where the guy was the owner of like four or five funeral homes on the Cape mm -hmm. and uh, he retired. He was a veteran. And the family, right before he died, divested him of everything. So he died a pauper. And they tried to have us pay for the funeral. And it's like, really? Are you? And they said, well, we want to test the law. And it was like, okay, well, this is ridiculous. So um, they luckily withdrew. But it did cause us to talk to the state. And the state has revised their policy. So we really, we no longer deal with the funeral home unless there's no next of kin. If there is family next of kin, we only deal with them. And we give them the money we don't work. I don't worry about it because the funeral homes here, we have a good relationship with. But I know across the state there's been issues. Now does Drowsdale do cremations? Don't they do it there? I don't know. I, I don't think anybody can do it there. I, oh. They're all shipped off to Worcester. To so um, Worcester? I thought there Worcester. was a place in Springfield. There is. There is a crematory in Springfield. That's right. Um, so yeah, it's depending, but yeah, but they all ship it off. And um, somebody like James Foreign going into the veteran cemetery, that's free to Massachusetts veterans. That's the one the that's... guy who uh, cut the Christmas lights. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The last time I had to stop him from going into jail, he was um, Joe and I got a call from the police, and they said that. Rock is down at Stop and Shop. He's in trouble. Can you guys get over there? So we hop in the truck and we drive down. And the manager said, all of a sudden, we see this guy over there next to Lookers 44 planting flowers. And they're really nice and everything. 
but there are flowers, and he didn't pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and they said, if you can just get him up to the VA or get him some help, we won't press charges, <laughs> which is what we did. But unfortunately, he could never stay there. We had finally gotten to the point he came into my office and spoke to me versus Joe, because Joe's a Vietnam vet. He would only talk to Joe. He'd get called up to the jail, all of that. But he finally came to see me because one of the social workers said, go see Steve. And we were filing paperwork, finally, for his service connected. And then he died. Yeah. While I was on vacation. You know, that veteran's cemetery, mm -hmm. I never saw anything so beautiful in my life. When Mary Netto passed away, mm -hmm. and because of her husband being yep. buried there, yep. I've never seen that. I could not believe it. Agawam? Yes. Yeah. You, think, you oh. think Agawam, and it is. Agawam is something because they're allowed to have upright yes. and they do it. Like at Bourne, everything has to be flat, so yep. it doesn't have that same look. Agawam is gorgeous. You really want to see something that looks even better than that? Go up to Winchenden, where yes. the other one is. But it's way up there. But the one in Winchenden is incredible. Striking. It is, oh, it is. It is Striking. beautiful up there. Yeah. You know, and so if you're a veteran or the survivors, my mother's down in Agawam, it only makes sense because. You never have to worry about it going out of business. Yes, you know, exactly. you deal with cemeteries that have been forgotten yep. or whatever. I deal with them in some of our towns. But those, those perpetual care. You yeah. don't have to worry about it forever. And they're yeah. so yeah. professional in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah, so the other one was the medical expenses. So we are below budget, um, which is the first. I don't think I've ever gotten to say that. Um, oh, but luckily, we're finally up to the monies, and I get it now. I don't have to go in front of city council as much. Remember, I used to have to yeah. come. In this is nice because you've been over before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I sure <laughs> have. Yeah. But now we finally caught up, and, um, and you don't I haven't you. figured out a system because the way DVS does it, um, we now do it over the internet. But I can't get access to data like I used to. What I would really like to present folks with is how much 100% we're getting back versus 75%. But it, I would have to do that manually. I'd have to have staff people just go through those numbers. That was my and next question. Tedious. We discussed that actually before you walked yeah. in. Yeah. I, I, I'm hoping that the geniuses over in Boston will be able to tell me um, how I can get that data. Because it's a different line, you know, it's a different code. So I imagine they can pull it up a lot easier than I can. What I can tell you is, is that. What is the website? The website? Is that, is that what, do you have to you get into a website? Yeah, it's um, through the, EA, the EOHHS has a website where DTA can get in there, food stamps, whatever. You can do all the application online. Yeah. And Veteran Services is one of those things. You have to have a password and yep. all of that. So I can go in there and enter all the data of somebody. And depending on which line I'm paying them from, which budget line the state gives me, they can collect all that data because it's just a computer program. Sure. I can't get that information. i got to get it from them. Huh. But what I would like is them to tell me, under this line of it, how many people, how much have we spent... Because I know I'm getting 100% of that versus, you know, the regular community people that I'm dealing with. I can tell you that since July 1st, we have assisted nine homeless veterans to get housed in two and a half months. Wow. Um, and all of that money, except one of the gentlemen, that would be 10, um, is at 100% back. The other one, he um, was moving from one residence to another. I shouldn't say. He was moving from transitional housing, but it wasn't a HUD bash. HUD bash is 100% back. This person would not be 100. He'd be 75. But he's housed, permanent housing in Leeds. Real happy. Mm -hmm. So for you to get that data, that information online, would you need another password? Is that what you're saying? No, I need or they just I need them, the programmers, to go in and get it. Because I can't get it. You need a budget report that they're not yeah. providing. Right. It's I need a budget system. report off of the lines that yeah. I can't pull up. There was a time, there was a two year span where I was using a Microsoft Access program. 
And at that time, I could sit in the office and in two hours I could get you guys reports. And I think I did. I think I showed you the difference you did. from, you know, when they changed the law and how we had more people on and all the changes. We had some I pretty long spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah. I can't do that anymore because it's on the web. I don't have access to a hard drive that will do it. I need them to do it for me. Hmm. But I'm, I, I just got to make a note of providing it for the next meeting. I'll, Are they receptive to, to it? Do they, do yeah, they... Keith will do it for me. Okay. Yeah. He's the director of operations. I'd like to see it. I really? Yeah. Would. Yeah. Um, but we, and it was interesting because I had Mike Hagmeyer, the, um, I don't know what his title is now, but uh, Soldier on. Oh. Jack's the CEO. Yeah. Mike He's, is in charge of the Soldier on programs yeah. or whatever. He's the under, un, the under big chips. Yeah. yeah. He uh, called us last week and said, how many of our guys do you have on? And I said, geez, I don't know, but I think, I think about 20. We're down, you know, I think it's about 20 or whatever. And he goes, oh, okay. I said, well, why don't you call Rebecca? She can, she probably knows better than I do. So he said, sure, I'll call her. Well, I called her and I said, how many? Oh, I think about 20 something. I said, oh, good, good. That's what I thought. And then about a, two hours later, she says, 35. <laughs> okay. All right. It wasn't what we thought. So I called him up and I told him and he said, thanks. But, um, but all of those people are now 100%. So I get all that money back at 100%. The Cherry Street program on Cherry Street, yep. 100% back. And anybody who has a HUD bash who's been homeless and is moving out of either out of our town to someplace else or moving within my towns, um, yeah. we get 100% back. So. Well, at least we'll so, get that money. Yeah, we're getting it all back. Uh, we do have the initial outlay, but now we've funded it so I can get it back. Cherry Street is owned by what? Cherry Street is a... I don't know if the VA owns it or some other kind of entity owns I know they get the money from the but administration. But they run the program. The VA right. runs that program. So it is a transitional housing. Yeah. So you go in there, you're allowed to be there as long as you can work up at the VA or have an outside job. Yeah. Um, but they are there to transition you into having your own residence um, without substance abuse, yeah. how to pay your bills, yeah. do all that stuff. So that is run by the VA hospital. It's not a nonprofit. It's not like Soldier Out or something like that. That's Cherry Street yeah. program run by Beth, Beth Grazade. So. Yeah, and it's absolutely amazing how many people go through that program with people that you would not know mm -hmm. that you know right. that have been there. And you go, yes. and when we find they went to the Cherry Street program, you go, yeah. But it's been a very successful program. Yeah. So we've had a lot of people long time. who have located in the community and have done really well over yeah. time. I know, Steve, it. that I have talked to you about coming in for September. And you are going to make a decision if we should have you come in for December or not. Do you think you need to come in? So I'm not lined up again until December? Yeah. You should have me come in in December then. I can okay. report I on have budget stuff halfway through. The Human Rights Commission coming in at 5. Okay. So could you make it like at 5 30 or something? I can make it at 5 30. I bet you I'll be here. You know. Jeez. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Set your alarm on your, on your phone right now. I'll be waiting, Steve. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in in December because um, the other thing that we need to go over is whether or not we're fully going to comply with the district formation under Chapter 115, which means we became, become our own entity. I'll no longer be a department within the city. So right. we will wait and see on that. Let's, yeah, that's, let's, that's let's have your thoughts. He's now yeah. the, regional, the regional dark overlord. There you go, the dark overlord. Right now, we are doing this through a municipal agreement, mm -hmm. and everybody pays the city of North Hampton yeah. to operate it. Um, I got a grant to comply with Chapter 115, which right now we're not in compliance, because we would become our own entity. And there are certain places like uh, the Cape, um, they have a district. What that would mean is, is that the office that I hold in Northampton the city will start charging me rent, or charge the district rent, which we are part of, but rather than just the city
paying for all of the rent, all the towns would pay the rent. But it's going to be an expense, so we really have to look through that. We would also have our own treasurer. So just exactly what is it that makes you not in compliance? The fact that we are not our own entity. Period. That we are, that we have contracts with the other towns, but I'm under the city of Northampton. I'm an employee of the city of Northampton. Yeah. Will you still be an employee of the city of Northampton? No. So you'll be paid through, through whatever the treasurer. Mm -hmm. Right. But you'll still qualify as our BSO obligation. Right, right, right. I'll still be. I, I still meet the criteria of the criteria of having veteran services for each town. Yeah. And according to the secretary, they actually used our district to show how a district should work. Except that we are not a district under Chapter One Fifteen, right. and this this change over this coming year will do that. And it, in a way, it'll be fairer to the city of Northampton. It was. So yeah, that remember the issue of contiguous communities and Steve uh, was. Right, and I wasn't because we didn't have Hadley. Right. The grant allowed us to get Hadley, which now makes us a, would now I'm make us citizen. meet yeah. that obligation. The only thing we haven't done is become our so on our own entity. We have to have our own treasurer. Um, we'll so we had a blank spot between Northampton and Amherst, and it right. was Hadley. Right. Period. Right. But now we have Amherst. And so will there still be a city committee? We're well, that's a good question. Yes. And they, that's but, the, but they're that's still they're providing sure. veteran services. For right. We, I still have to answer to all my communities. Right. You're not the only community. Like, I have to go to the, yeah, 6.30 I have a selectman's meeting in Amherst. I go to meetings up in Bergey. Joe goes to those meetings. I go to the finance committee in Hamlet. Like, we are still answerable to all the town governments. It's just I won't be an employee of the city of Northampton. I'll be an employee of the district. Which means, you know, the mayor would have a vote, the town manager of Amherst or the selectman, you know, everybody yeah. will have a vote now. I've been put in it, and so it'll be shared. Okay. Well, I'd imagine I mean, part of the concern is, of course, to because we are required to have a veterans services committee. Mm -hmm. That would still stand. Yep. He would serve as he would still be the VSO, right? But he would not be exclusively Northampton's VSO. But all veteran services that we discuss would be that is right. Steve. And so, right. so basically, he's going to look it's gonna exactly. Look, the it's going to be exactly <laughs> the same thing, okay. except that I won't get paid any longer by the city. Right. I'll be paid by the district. Right. So we'll have our own treasurer and stuff like that. So, but that's if everybody goes along with it. There's 10 times I get to decide it. Yeah. Thank you, Steve, very, very Thank much. you. Steve, so, we'll see um, 5.30 on December 16th. I don't think you wrote that down. I'll put it in an email. <laughs> <laughs> Something else for me to ignore. No, I'm just kidding. There you go. Huh? December 16th on Monday, 5.30. Easy one for me to remember. It's my brother Jim's birthday. There you go. And what are we going to be talking about? Um, hairstyles. Yeah. Latest Hair trends. Style. Latest trends in footwear. Uh, low calorie food. <laughs> All the stuff that's done. What are you going to talk about, Steve? Um, I'll just continue to update you on the budget and stuff, but uh, I will let you know about what's happening with the district formation under 115. Okay. Sorry to the folks in Amherst for us. No. Yes. Tell them we said hey. Yeah. I shall do that. They are, the meeting, or what I'm dealing with with them is they have, under the Valor Act that was passed last year, um, cities and towns now can offer people to work off their property taxes um, if they're veterans. They can do what? services? Yes. Yeah, by working in the town, like working on trails or working oh. in my office or working in HR, wherever they want to work they would get a, a rate of pay, but rather than giving them the money, it just comes off of their property taxes. That's a good thing. I think it's up to $1,500, isn't it? What's the age on that? There was a limit. Different, there's no specific limit. Well, I think there's an ultimate limit, but towns pretty much decide how far they want to go. I think Joan Serafin told me it was $1,500. <laughs> okay. Uh, Amherst is doing more than that. I yeah. think they're doing 10. Wow. wow. 
that they're allowed to write off on the taxes by working over the year. But how old do you have to be? You just have hey. to be a veteran. Then. That's it. Yeah, and a property owner uh, for right. more than a certain amount of years. But it would really? account for the property tax. <laughs> yeah. So Amherst had uh, voted it, uh, but now I have to propose what we're actually going to do, and they're going to give me the thumbs That's up to my vote. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you Enjoy, December. everyone. See ya. See you, Steve. Hi, Hi Ann. You can come right up. All right. And thank you for being here, and thank oh. you for coming in earlier. Oh, no problem. Got a lot of brochures. I do, because I want to encourage you guys to not only learn about Shelter Sunday, but to participate in some small way. Oh, my God, it's Shelter Sunday. Wow. Right. Yeah. Yes, it is. So I understand that some of you have actually canvassed before. Yes. Yes. Point, so. yes. Yeah. I think we all have. We all have. And Can you scan that there. to Mary? Go ahead. So in Pulaski Park and, and also part of the greeting and, and the other ceremony. Yeah. 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 Well, um, and I'm going to need this the, back, so if you can scan uh, that service to is the budget. Admin can you do for that? This. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a collaborative committee between these six agencies, and we all share uh, equally in the proceeds. So it's really inspiring in that way because people share the workload, and it's wonderful. It's wor wor worked out very well for a lot of years. And this year it's um, October 6th. It's the 22nd year, and it's from 10 to 4. So we're looking to you to sort of talk up the event and um, be involved in some way, whether it's making a donation, telling your neighbors about it, um, canvassing, glad handing. Glad handing we've, we've done on occasion. Um, there's also social media in a sense. It's kind of bad, so. As I think we have been doing a little bit of that. I think um, Greta from Safe Passage has been working on that piece for us, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, and uh, uh, Wendy has been doing uh, the admin, uh, Wendy Payson uh, has been doing the admin portion of this for, for years now um, on behalf of Service Center. And this year I've just gotten involved to be part of the committee because my new position at Service Center is Director of Development. So sort of interested in how this whole thing has worked. And it's worked very successfully. Um, they made $50,000 last year. Um, and that is shared amongst um, six agencies, which is um, the Interface Shelter, the Friends of the Homeless Shelter, Grove Street Inn, the Grace House, mm -hmm. Man of the Soup Kitchen, Safe Passage. Did I miss one? I don't think so. Oh yes, the SRO Project, which is about 300, serves about 300 folks in town that um, live in rooming houses. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a great um, uh, guy who's representing those on the, on the those folks on the committee. Uh, so it's a, it's a a lot of new folks this year, but it's it's really exciting. I Everyone's see this. Doing a great job. My question is, it's on October sixth, and I, I know I think when I emailed you that maybe you could come to City Council during open public session. I don't know Phil, what you think about that, and bring us to everybody in the city's attention of getting it out. It would be great, because we, we have been struggling a little bit this year uh, with the volunteers. We have two very serious um, volunteers who have made tremendous contributions who are both on vacation this year. Oh. So we're, and they covered a large areas for us. One covered a lot of the um, South Street area and did an excellent job. So um, we are looking to build our ranks a little bit. <laughs> Do you think somebody could come to see yeah. the council? Yeah, I, I, I thought that was a great idea. So we're having a meeting tomorrow morning. I thought I'd bring it up and see who would like to do that. I would certainly be happy to come and do it. Um, it's no problem for me to do it. Right, because Bill can explain the procedures on open public session, because you have three minutes to well, speak. Yeah. Just, well, actually, you can, yeah, you can do it during public comment and just mention. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, public comment. I'm, I'm posting on Facebook. Yeah. So, Thank you. They, they got multiple websites that with var the varying dates from years past. So the 2013 was a little hard to run the ground. So I'll, I did find the 2013 one. So that's what I'm posting right now. Thank See? you for that. See? It's 
it's magic when you come here. <laughs> That's why we like working with our agencies. And this is, I mean, this is so gratifying because it serves such a, you know, a needy population. And as I said, it's a, a great, you know, it's a great camaraderie between these agencies that are all working together to, to help, you know, the most vulnerable among us. And it's really exciting. Do you think they'll um, do any open public session or doing a presentation? Well, I think you can get it pretty much done in three minutes. You yeah. tell people what you can get brochures and the, mm -hmm. you know, essentially what you're trying to do, you're hitting all the points of congregating. Um, it's, the, it's the largest fundraiser of its sort in the valley, and that um, community participation, North Indian tradition is very generous in, in supporting Shelter Sunday, and it provides services for a lot of us. You know the spiel, I don't need yeah. to tell you, but it's... And the chances you're getting on the agenda between now and Thursday are yeah. slim. Right. Um, but if I take my three minutes... Okay. Plenty of time, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you'll be fine. Just make sure you get here like around what the quarter seven ten up to sign up. So yeah, you could be like the first to speak. And you can yeah. There's nothing really big or controversial on the agenda. So I don't imagine it'll be a don't huge say that public comment. As soon as you say that, <laughs> I know you say that, something comes up. Somebody will have a late file. That will, yeah, right. And I'll, I'll bring a late file. I'll bring um, a bunch of these in case people might want to. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I could pass them out or whatever. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Also, too, Dan, I know for the past couple of years I've asked for a sign, and I can't get a sign to put on my lawn. I'm going to get you a sign. Can you do that, please? <laughs> I am. I've got, I'm in like this with the sign for Oh, that'd be perfect. Your lawn's going to be pretty crowded. Yeah, <laughs> well, but I believe you're probably going to have to sign up for your candidacy as well. Isn't it? Definitely. That's what I'm saying. You see? <laughs> Plus, we have a lot, too, so. So, is there somewhere where I can? Yes. Bring it? Yep. It's, um, you have my address. Yeah. Right? right in front of, if you drive in my driveway, mm -hmm. you could put it to the right-hand side after the mailbox. Sounds great. Okay. I'll do it. Let me. I mean, it's a perfect location. Everybody's always asking me about placing signs out there, but. I've been asking for two years, and I really would like to have one there. That would be fantastic. We would love you to have one. Let me Thank just you. get a pen so I don't forget. You have a good spot, too. Yes, I've got one. I take it out. I have one, I have one in my garage that I take out every year, and I put it in. I got it from uh, uh, Nancy uh, Silva. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, so do you need, um, we get new date stickers every year. Do oh. you need a date sticker for Okay, yours? I could have a date sticker, yes. Yeah, I always... Course. I always take the, I have those rubber bumper stickers that I dry erase. Oh. <laughs> you don't want people showing up on the sticker would be good. Okay. Yeah. You don't want, yeah, you don't want people showing up October 22nd. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the last one, so. This is such a good cause. It really is. And I, you know what, we did our neighborhood last year, the North Street, Northern Avenue area. And people just, I mean, the nice thing about it is that people know ahead of time that you're coming. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and they're very friendly, and it's a very sympathetic cause. So, you know, it's it's really easy. It's not like cold calling yeah. when, you know, no one knows you're coming and they're just hiding in their kitchen trying not to answer <laughs> the door. They're, yeah. really, they're really looking forward to giving. So yeah. what you basically do is when you give these to whoever, they go around to homes and bring them? Yeah. That's it? They give them, um, they... Wendy and um, I guess it's Brittany um, this year on the committee do a large map and they give streets away. And of course they prioritize the streets that have traditionally been most successful um, and they get people to cover those. And then people come in and get either to Pulaski Park that morning or they can come into service at any time in the next couple of weeks. And they get their envelope for their street that contains all the brochures they need. And a lot of people just give right at the door. Or they take these and they can, as you see, there's yeah, an envelope and um, they can mail it in afterwards. And then anything that you get, you just write on the back of the envelope. It's really easy. And the envelope contains the little, yeah. you know, speech. You know, it makes it easy for you. Yeah. It's really um, They had a collection uh, place behind the Florence Diner. I think it was two years ago or three years ago. I forget when it was. And then it hasn't been there since where we collected stuff. So anyway, well, we'll see. Yeah. I don't know what the collection sites are in Florence. I, I, I know, know they have a, they have, um, you know, a, a 
set up in Pulaski Park for people to come and get yeah. there on stuff. And then there's a place up in Florence uh, at the bank that's similar. Yeah. You know, okay. to you know, to run the event, um, to help run the event. But I don't know where the collection sites. I know that they have here Stop and Shop, Big Y. Um, I guess they didn't do Walmart because they haven't found that very successful. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, they have. I guess they do do Coopers in Florence. Yeah. So that should be successful. Yeah. Because the Cooper family, there are such good people. Yeah. Doing they're a lot of functions and. Pretty active. Yeah. 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 They're wonderful people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Very I generous. Well, I can take. Well, well, we could give some of these to the consulars Thursday. Yeah, if we're still talking to them, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I didn't know whether you had like little, you know, desks or something. You can leave them on. Well, you know there. what? You got a primary tomorrow in Ward Six, where a lot of people are congregating. Well, that's true. That's not political. That's not thank politics. You. And you can pass them out that's to thing. folks thank as they you. come to the polls. Be. Thank you. Thank you. I but, will do yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're not going to get a lot of opportunities to get people to show up in one place for anything. Good idea, Except Ruth. For funerals. Yeah. Thank you for the suggestion. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. It's my job, man. It's my job. Yeah. It's my job. So Which I'm paid quite handsomely for. Yeah. You get a lot of compensation. <laughs> I will actually try to get these things to come home. Is That'd there, be great. Is there a place that, that I could drop your dates to go off? Are you coming to the council on Thursday? Yes. Yeah, you I'll bring be there. Well, there you go. That's perfect. But you can't bring my sign in here. No, I'll drop your sign at your house. Okay. And do you want the sign back? Well, you can keep I it. I keep mine. Um, a lot of people do, or, you know. Okay. It happens yeah. every year. So. Yeah. Happens every year. God willing. Yeah. And that's great. great. That's yeah. great. In fact, in ours a few years, it'll be 25th. I know, because we're right. such a good location in. Yeah. It's a main artery. Yeah. It is, it is wonderful. And this really starts the... Uh, um, these organizations are right for their mm -hmm. the season. Uh, but in. I like what Councilor Bill Joy just mentioned, and we will pass those out tomorrow in the primary. Never thought of it. Thank God he's sitting beside me. <laughs> 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 and I'm not getting you involved in the fundraising. Okay. <laughs> that be Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? No, Any I think it. Thank you very much for coming. How's things going otherwise? They're going great. Yeah. Yeah. Development officer, a very thankless cat. <laughs> it's in, in a shallow pond it is. fishing for big fish. But. It is, and we're trying, as we said, we just keep trying new and different yeah. things. We're, we're developing a lot of um, opportunities this year for people to come in and see what we do in a more casual way. Um, we're planning to um, uh, have an art show with our participants' art. Oh, uh, that's and, great, actually. Yeah. That's, yeah. So as soon as I get the, the firm dates on those, and we're, um, you know, trying to, like, sort of let people see as best they can. Obviously, it's difficult with this work that we do for us yeah. to see us work, but to see in situations like that, what, yeah. what our staff are doing. You probably tie it in with Art Walk. You do with Art Walk. Um, your own oh. gallery space of sorts. We'll find one of the... Oh, what a uh, great idea. You know, one of the downtown spaces, there's not a lot of them left that are empty, but one of the things that C3 used to do was promote um, property owners who had um, spaces that were vacant to not look vacant, but they could do gallery displays. And you guys could probably get a show or talk to APE possibly and maybe get a show for during our walk that would be oh, part of the great. benefit. That's, get some of your artists in. Yeah, we, uh, we would definitely have the, the artists representing their work and yeah. talking about it. Yeah. And the exciting thing for us is we're going to do cross the division. We're going to have both our developmental folks and our MHRS folks, the mental health folks together, which they usually don't. That'd be great. Yeah, so you can really see the two different um, populations that we serve. A lot and, and, and and the beauty of that art is is that you know there's a lot of well, for lack of a better term, it's classified as high end art. But there's there's more of a folk art that and uh, that you guys represent that's kind of under displayed in the community, and that would be I think people would be very receptive to something like that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So. Was well, great seeing you. You too. Thank you for coming. 
You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Do I know. Am. Thank you. See you around. Bye. 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 Bye.